Hi, it's uh, Jason here at the Centre for Computing History. Um, we're at the Synthesize Weekend, an event we hold uh, every year, um, and each year gets bigger and better. Um, this year, I am really pleased to, to uh, announce that we have John Malloy here with us. Hi. Thank you very much for coming. You're most welcome. Um, people know you from the man Mainframe. Yes. And others? Mm, might be. Uh, there was various, I went on to do various other things, like uh, write a few computer games at the end of the thing and do some music for a band, uh, for a... Uh, Publisher called Magnetic Scrolls. We were one of the first companies to um, take samples and use them on the um, uh, uh, the Amiga at the time. Uh -huh. In fact, um, Ken rewrote the DS3 engine, and in fact, the DS3 samples I developed for the game. Literally, I just handed him the sequences and stuff, and that's what you hear on the Amiga version of the game. Oh right, okay. So that was quite fun. Fantastic. So going back to the the early days and, and mainframe, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't your average synth band, was it? Well, we were... There was another you know, dimension. We were, the two, we were the two guys in the bedroom with synthesizers and keyboards and uh, various other bits and bobs. Um, it was very talented uh, to work with uh, Murray, who had a very good ear for uh, what things sounded like and could uh, listen to stuff and, and you know, be able to uh, get that out of the equipment that he owned. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. equipment that he had, he knew inside out in terms of the outboard gear and the mixing. So what sort of equipment did you have? The and, and, when, and importantly, when was this and how old were you? Mm, I was 21. I think we first started working together uh, in 81. And it was a nine to five job. Uh -huh. we'd lit I'd literally get on the bus and turn up at Murray's at about nine in the morning. And then we'd uh, crack on with a, a day of work and then see what comes on. Uh -huh. And so it was... It was fun. It was. It was definitely. Uh, it was nice at that time to be doing things that other people weren't doing. Right. And especially with the Greengate stuff, when my Apple friends kind of got involved with doing what we were doing as well, uh -huh. we kind of were starting to push what the technology could do. I mean, there's no way that uh, you know us lads at the time could have afforded a Fairlight. Mm. But Dave said, "Here's a piece of technology that I think might help." You know, and it meant, meant we could do proper drum tracks at the time. And then we started pushing that harder and harder and ended up with a full-blown sampling system, which yeah. was uh, quite exciting. But we also had other ideas, like in terms of doing the albums and stuff, um, and also trying to uh, bring computers into uh, what we do. You know, in other words, uh, when we, the first single, I think, we had um, the ability to um, load um, a program into your, uh, your personal computer, and then you could then plug an audio cable into the what would have been the tape in slot. Yeah. And then it would animate uh, the graphics on the screen based on the music coming in. Right. And we didn't lock it so it would only play mainframe stuff. You could use it with all the stuff you <laughs> <laughs> Well, you mentioned that. Hmm. And um, that's one of the reasons the museum has an interest in, in you. Mm -hmm. um, from our archive, well, um, we have... Awesome. Yes. You do indeed. That single. Yes. Absolutely. That is the first one we had. I thought at one point we were going to do something with the Apple logo, but um, I don't know what happened with that. It's it might have been a puzzle that got involved. It's a bit of a, a little bit squashed apple uh, it is. at the top there. It's probably hand-drawn, that's why. <laughs> but um, for those that might be watching, possibly of a, of a younger generation, um, let's show them what vinyl actually was. Vinyl! Um, so there it is. Um, so we are on, what are we on there? That's on the A side. So yeah. the song is on that side. Effe effectively, what we did is we didn't write any music for the B-side and we ended up writing some software which we recorded. Right. Uh, the, the wonderful guy who uh, cut it in the cutting room was slightly freaking out when we, we suggested we were, what we were going to do. But, uh, so to i.e. Well. recording kind of the, yes, the, the computer than, loading yeah. data yeah. onto the vinyl. Yeah, yeah, didn't because, like that. Well, because it's not necessarily uh, music, there could be phase issues and that kind of stuff. You, know, right. it's kind of, you don't want the needle jumping out of the... Uh, when you put it on the record player. So, uh, yeah, ideally not. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not the best way to get the information out. So, so you could then connect the output of your turntable into the ear of your computer, it would listen, yeah. you would load up the software and it would create colour graphics. Yeah, based um, on the music coming right. into, on, into the tape. Software. And I've read somewhere that you were using that kind of thing on stage as well for live yeah, that performances. Was, that's kind of where Colin came in in the first place. He Do you know where uh, I read it? Oh, where? Seems a bit scary. Uh, on the letter that came on this it. letter you wrote. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's uh, just me, I'm afraid. Why didn't Murray sign it? But anyway, 
So we've got a, <laughs> a random history. I didn't realise. Yeah, so, so in this really? we have um, a whole piece there about mainframe, explaining yeah. to people we used to who you a, are and what you are. We used to have a, um, uh, an early uh, kind club. Of a press pack, wasn't it? Right. Well, no, we had a, a club where we mail out. It was like the, before the internet, before the internet, we'd actually hand the mail out to all <laughs> our, our fans. Right. We were doing this and that, which was quite fun. So uh -huh. we and we gradually got to know people in the BBC and stuff, so we did various bits of TV for... Um, uh, there was a kid's show for, that was filmed at the Open University up at um, Milton Keynes and uh -huh. uh, uh, various other bits and pieces. In the end, we were kind of disappointed by the, the BBC mix at the time. So in the, in the end, we used to give them the output from our, our mixing desk and say, you know, well, you can mess with the vocal sound, but the rest of it's us. Live, right. you know. That was quite fun. So yeah. that they didn't do the, the job that you well, were hoping. The thing with the BBC back in the day was that they'd record all the instruments perfectly balanced, but there wouldn't be a mix. Mm. So you wouldn't get the sound of the band, you'd get uh, the sound of all the instruments. Kind of a dryer. Yeah, well, sort just of whatever. It was yeah. just not the way we, right. we were used to it. You know. Right. But uh, these days they're much, much better at it. <laughs> That's some practice. Well, they've That's got the time. gear as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. Look how the technology's moved on. <laughs> So, um, live performances and things like that, you were, were you using some of these home computers and having monitors on stage and creating yeah, graphics, we, or we how did that work out? Basically, Colin used to uh, uh, do variations of that, plus images. Uh, I'm looking quizzically off in that direction because... Colin's um, over here. Colin's over there. Holding uh, the camera. But it was, uh, it was to do with the fact that um, he would just turn up with the monitors, we'd drop them on stage at random places, and uh, we'd do it that way. Mm -hmm. Although... We did do some weird concerts. Uh, they, we had another band called The Noise of Art, which was this Mickey Tate band. Sounds familiar. Mm, yeah. Um, but the point being was that uh, at that point, all the computers were being used to make the music. So I had uh, two Greengate DS3s on a, two keyboards, like playing a Hammond, and Murray had a similar setup. Mm -hmm. And then we'd get guest musicians in, including... Uh, we did a performance in Milton Keynes um, in the Pyramid Building there. Um, and Gavin Harrison, who's gone on to become quite a famous drummer, mm -hmm. uh, turned up, well, we got him an octopad, and he turned up and he played vocals. <laughs> so the vocal tunes would be based on what he was drumming on the right. thing. So it would be whatever we did that make, you know, um, make an entertaining Yeah, movie. make it interesting to people watching. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So so it was, you know, we're not entirely serious. We're serious about what we do, but... Uh, it's nice to put a bit of humour in there. Absolutely, well. absolutely. You can't take yourself too seriously. Not at all. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for coming no, along today. You're most welcome. Um, I would ask you to sign this. But um, I've signed it. Except you already have, <laughs> so uh, there, there would be no point. Uh, let's just show that to the camera there. Yeah, so um, well, when was that dated? Is it dated? Not uh, dated. So it would have been if it was that. It'd be quite early on, in early eighties. Mm -hmm. If that was the first single, that would definitely be but, um, you know, the first thing we put out as so. mainframe. As mainframe. Yeah. And Malcolm and Martin. Any ideas? No, too not far off back. Top of my head. Um, unless it's the guys at the BBC. I, I, there was a Malcolm at the BBC that we used to deal with on a regular basis. Right. Um, so. It got quite difficult. I used to spend most of Tuesdays phoning around the uh, all the radio stations to see if they were going to play it. Just you know, pushing, it. saying, "Well, you've got to like this one, but the next one will be coming, and you've got a name, you know." Uh, but you don't need to do that these days, you just need to get it up onto YouTube. And uh, uh, it's a very different place now, isn't it? It is indeed. Um, so yeah, YouTube gets people. Famous and Although and these days we've got much more wonderful toys, so yeah, yeah. I'm spending too much yeah. time playing with the toys and not actually doing the music. So, well, that's exactly what I was about to say. I mean, there is so many sounds available at your fingertips um, that actually I, I haven't really programmed anything for quite some time, and you know that changes things, doesn't it? I mean, back in the day, you'd have an analog synth, you would make a sound, and it was your own, and you might not actually recreate it again live on stage or when you come to record it, so it'd be slightly different. Well, the other and there's a lot of nice, you know. Well, there is that. There's a, there's a nice synergy of it, uh, but uh, also it's the fact that um, the synthesizer didn't get software updates, so I can, you know, be away from the studio for a week and come back and have to spend another four days trying to learn what the learning new the new are. menu structure <laughs> or whatever whatever new options they've got but, uh, <laughs> but it's certainly quite exciting currently as well so. uh, there's some amazing stuff going on all yeah. the boutique synths that are coming out exactly um and and the prices that are coming out at as well some also, of these things are, you know relatively the, the virtual cheap. stuff on the ipads is getting yes. absolutely scary yeah i finally got the vcs3 i wanted at uh, affordable price <laughs> and uh, the fairlight emulator isn't too bad either that's brilliant it's so brilliant it's, it's very know, clever we've, very good. Um, we've got a, an akai um 
uh, Synth Station yeah. with, a, with an original iPad. You know, and the Synth Station you can pick up for 25 quid you yeah. know, and use an old iPad that your, your auntie give you or whatever, I don't know. But you've got a, a really quite usable little system there for Absolutely. You know, not very much money, which is brilliant. It means more people can get into it. Murray's now mostly recording his uh, daughter's stuff. Right. Sort of uh, more trad jazz, I think, is fair to mm -hmm. what they're up to. Uh, again, using similar techniques to what we use, but uh, it's all in the piano sounds for that kind of stuff yeah. and the guitars. Um, I've been doing some music last year. I had a, I did some music for a, um, a production at the Fringe at Edinburgh. Uh -huh. um, you know, incidental music for a theatre piece, which was quite exciting. And I'm kind of stringing that together, perhaps to release later in the year. But we'll Brilliant. See. Yeah, well, I look Thank forward to that. Much. Thank but you. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming today. Yeah, we thank really you very, appreciate very much. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go Brilliant. hide now. Yep. <laughs> and I put one too many thank yous on the end. That's all right. Thank you. How many thank yous do you need? Punches, punches, punches.